In their desperation to get closer throughout the night, Shirley and Jenny have bent the steel bars between them. Scott finally manages to pry open the gate so Shirley can get through, and the reunion is complete. That was footage of Shirley and Jenny, two crippled elephants that were happily reunited after 22 years. But how much are elephants really like humans? Let's find out. Most people get their first view of an elephant at the circus or the zoo, two environments that are vastly different from an elephant's natural habitat and can be a hindrance to the rich social bonds elephants share with one another, bonds that are at the heart of their survival. Fred Berkovich of the San Diego Zoo writes that in Africa, elephants can cover over 50 miles or 80 kilometers in a day if food is scarce. More often than not, they cover just a few miles during a day. Now compare that with the 2,200 square feet of space. That is what the American Zoological Association, or AZA, recommends. Joyce Poole, research director of the Ambassoli Elephant Research Project writes, hey, just a thought, by AZA logic, we might suggest that human beings, being about 2% the body weight of an elephant, would do just fine living in 44 square feet if we were provided with food, water, and a breeding partner. We wouldn't mind, would we? I mean, uh, humans don't need community or meaningful relationships with one another or the ability to travel across vast distances to accommodate our need for food and shelter. Oh wait, we totally do. But surely elephants don't have the same kind of emotional responses as humans. They couldn't possibly inhabit the mind of another and exhibit something like empathy. After all, the ability to do this is one of the cornerstones of human civilization. It's what allows us to stitch together the fabric of community that's meant to support one another. Now, there are plenty of anecdotes of elephants assisting others that are injured. Plucking out tranquilizer darts, spraying dust on others' wounds, or helping baby elephants climb up muddy banks and out of holes, finding safe paths, and even breaking through electrified fences to help free a fellow elephant. But scientists have finally been able to observe and quantify empathy in elephants. Research Researcher Josh Potnick of the University of Cambridge in the UK studied the behavior of 26 elephants in captivity over the course of a year. The elephants exhibited something called emotional contagion, meaning that if one elephant was in distress, other elephants would adopt the same emotional state and then try to soothe one another. For instance, if elephants were startled by a barking dog or an advancing human, the elephants would move toward each other and huddle, touching each other's faces and caressing each other while making chirping noises. Think of it in terms of a haunted house. When you and your friends wind your way through a dark hallway and suddenly encounter or a ghoul, you don't dart off in different directions, no, you clutch at one another and pull yourselves close together in what might be interpreted as a kind of group consoling behavior. In addition, elephants have been observed exhibiting signs of grief at the loss of a family member, sometimes refusing to leave a dead elephant's side, and when it finally does, it moves at a slower than usual pace, with the rest of the herd matching that pace. Now consider that in 2012, Lawrence Anthony, a conservationist and author known as the Elephant Whisperer, passed away. Two days later, elephants that Anthony had rescued and rehabilitated arrived at his home. They had traveled 12 hours to get there and had not visited the compound in 18 months. So is this connection or is this merely coincidence? And do you think that loss of habitat and poaching will be the end of elephants in the 21st century? Let us know in the comments below and to keep the videos coming, make sure to subscribe.